Hey, I'm Corey from Digital Asset. I'm Senior Product Manager for Healthcare at DA, working on DAML-driven healthcare solutions. Um, DAML is, lives in the blockchain world, and so along with that phrase comes a lot of baggage about what blockchain is, how it works, and what it can do for industries like healthcare. Uh, but I want to back away from what is blockchain and how it works for a minute, and, and just conceptually think about what technology like DAML uh, can do for the industry and what we think it can do, and uh, what we're very excited about is how DAML uh, can help integrate with existing systems to create synchronized multi-party workflows for the healthcare industry. Uh, now that's a pretty loaded statement, so let me unpack that just a little bit. Uh, what's a multi-party workflow? It's a phrase we use a lot at DA um, and, and for DAML, and it, it can seem confusing. Um, but healthcare is full of what we call multi-party workflows. It's simply there are multiple enterprises, who are providing care uh, to a patient. The patient's a party themselves. Um, so there's the patient and there's the, the healthcare facility, the physicians who are providing the care. There's often an insurance company, whether that's a private commercial insurance company uh, here in the United States or a governmental insurer um, like there is around the world or, or in the case of the United States, Medicare, Medicaid, for example. Um, there may be a pharmaceutical company involved who is manufacturing the medication uh, that the patient takes. And the delivery of healthcare is um, a lot, these entities talking to each other um, about what care was delivered, uh, what, what the bill looks like, when they'll be paid, for example. And if anybody's experienced healthcare in the US, you know it, it's, it starts and stops. Um, there's a lot of breaks in the workflows where there may be faxes <laughs> uh, being sent to other parties who have to review the documentation, get back with a phone call, and it could be days, sometimes weeks, or even months before a business process completes, where care has been successfully delivered, where payment's been made, where all the records are updated, et cetera. And so there is no solo workflow in healthcare. It's always multiple parties. And that, uh, that multi-party workflow has what we call friction. It's not easy to communicate uh, all the information that needs to uh, flow uh, in order for these processes to complete quickly and seamlessly. And that's where DAML comes in. So what is DAML? DAML is a tool chain. Uh, it's, it's a language and uh, technological tools to allow enterprises to write uh, the business flows, the business logic of a multi-party workflow. And when deployed on a, on, a, on a database or a blockchain, it enforces the rules of that business logic um, so that the parties can trust that the uh, business workflow they're working on uh, will behave the way they expect it to. Um, and so that instead of just trusting that other party, um, we can now trust the technology in a new way um, to, to, to get better uh, synchronized workflows to ultimately deliver better care for the patient. And so in blockchain and healthcare, there's a lot of talk of let's put something on the blockchain, let's put medical records on the blockchain, let's put um, clinical research on the blockchain especially in the context of COVID-19, there's a lot of talk about that. But what that obfuscates, what that doesn't make clear is how that works. And so I wanted to take this first blog uh, and this first video to talk about how DAML integrates in with existing data systems to allow enterprises to, to build valuable multi-party technology um, to meet their business needs and to support the best interest of the patient. And so what what we're going to do is think about how DAML helps you break down data silos and drive uh, data interoperability, um, burning topic in healthcare as always, through DAML integrated messaging. So you see that blockchain technology, specifically DAML, doesn't replace existing data systems. It's not like we're going to replace uh, wholesale, uh, the claims adjudication systems, or the electronic medical record systems. When we talk about putting something on the blockchain, what we're really talking about is independent enterprises interacting with each other. Um, through smart contracts, through DAML business workflows, to increase that interoperability and to have it that, um, that workflow be secure in that it's going to behave in the expected manner. Um, parties can't uh, cheat each other um, on, on, uh, through DAML smart contracts um, and that the outcomes um, will be well understood and transparent to all the involved parties. And that's what a DAML smart contract fundamentally does. But how it does it is through integration and integration with existing data systems through one of the many uh, healthcare messaging specifications um, that we have. And so when we can tie these messaging specifications 
two smart contracts, we get a lot of business value. And so there's no shortage of messaging. Um, there we go. There's no shortage of messaging specifications in healthcare. Perhaps the most well-known is, is uh, X12, which is a messaging specification or at least a standard for how we communicate about our medical claims and payment. Um, there's clinical data messaging formats like HL7 or the new FHIR, the Fast Health Interoperability Resource. Uh, there's code sets to describe uh, clinical uh, information about the patient, diagnoses, procedures, SNOMED, um, HICS, HICS codes, etc. And then when we buy things in healthcare like supplies, we often communicate in an EDI uh, specified messaging system. The problem with the status quo or, or the current system now is not that we have these messaging specifications. These ensure that multiple parties are communicating in the same language. The problem is we send off a message and we send it off into a black box. A hospital will send a medical claim through their clearinghouse to an insurance company. What the insurance company or the clearinghouse is doing with that information, with that message, is completely opaque to the hospital. Um, we've come to learn that, oh, we'll hear back in a certain amount of time, they'll do something with it, they'll respond in this format, uh, but the process that the other party is going through to process that information and to return an answer is completely opaque. And so it's like we're passing slips of paper over the transom or underneath the door um, to another party who's doing something with it and then they'll get back to us. If we integrate these messaging specifications into DAML, then we have transparency into what the other party is doing, when they're doing it, or when they ought to be doing it, and what the expected response can look like, because we're now sharing a piece of business logic. It's not like I'm doing my homework on my side, passing it over to you, who does it on your side, and then passing a message back. We can integrate these messaging specifications into DAML smart contracts, and so that the smart contracts themselves can understand these messages. So we can create or solve for disparate workflows and code sets to prevent quality, um, <laughs> uh, or disparate workflows prevent quality improvement, and, and we can undo that. We can actually unify clinical workflows and financial workflows. Um, we can break down those data silos to achieve data liquidity. Um, which helps all the enterprises involved in healthcare operate better. Now, it might be helpful to, to talk about a concrete example of this. And for that, I want to talk about FHIR. Uh, so FHIR is the, the new um, clinical querying API and framework uh, for querying information inside electronic medical records. Unlike older uh, uh, querying uh, specifications like HL7, uh, Health Level 7, and FHIRs, uh, if you want to learn more about FHIR, you can go to hl7.org. Uh, they have great resources on the open standard of FHIR. What sets FHIR apart from previous iterations of how you query clinical data inside electronic medical record is that previous attempts were all very document focused. They still carry that, that notion that a medical record is a file folder full of papers. And so when you queried it, you could get documents back, uh, even in electronic format, XML format or others. Um, but what's different about FHIR is that you can query health resources. It, it really views um, the totality of information inside electronic medical record system as queryable uh, data resources um, that can be extracted, uh, transferred, and integrated very easily into other applications. Something you can't do with a document. If you've ever received a PDF, Integrating the information in that PDF into other programs uh, takes a lot of manual labor. FHIR overcomes that burden. FHIR enables us to very selectively pull clinical data resources outside of electronic medical records and integrate them into other kinds of applications. That could be a consumer-facing health application, like a Fitbit application, or it could be a commercial um, financial application around healthcare payment. One workflow that FHIR is often talked about um, being involved in is something called prior authorization. So often insurance companies will demand to authorize a treatment before it takes place. This is especially common for very expensive radiological tests, MRIs for example, where um, if a physician deems it necessary, they need to communicate with the insurance company. Um, and the insurance company has to authorize it uh, before it is available for payment uh, from the insurance company. And so the patient is left waiting. Uh, the physician has to communicate uh, not just that they want to do the MRI, but some sort of medical justification for that. And so that often involves clinical data. 
today's work, workflow around prior authorization in the vast majority of cases is still via phone and fax machine, where clinical documentation can be faxed to the insurance company for their review, and you can wait sometimes days, sometimes weeks for a response um, before the test can be conducted. The, for example, the scan or um, radiological test. Um, and this can be, you know, very trying for patients who understandably simply want the healthcare their physicians indicating that they need. Uh, one of the barriers there, though, is how we make that information, that clinical information, more liquid, um, such that it can be easily shared uh, with the insurance company, and the insurance company can very quickly return an answer on an authorization request. And so the way we think about that in DAML is that the DAML smart contract actually contains the authorization logic used by by a commercial insurer, for example, to determine whether or not a test is authorized or not. Um, we integrate that DAML smart contract in with uh, the FHIR API, such that um, we can translate outcomes from the FHIR API into DAML types. So we can make the DAML smart contract speak the same language uh, as the electronic MECA record through FHIR, in such that workflows can be become automated in the sense that a physician can pull the relevant information outside of electronic medical record, share it immediately with a smart contract, uh, which is uh, jointly uh, governed by both the insurance company and the physician, uh, and receive a, a determination of whether or not the treatment is authorized, and then proceed to deliver care to the patient. Um, by, by bringing in not only FHIR, which is an amazing resource for querying discrete pieces of clinical information, but integrating that into smart contracts, we can truly create synchronized workflows between large enterprises involved in healthcare and avoid the need for things like paper-based workflows, time delays, phone calls, breakages in the workflow where the data has to be resent or refaxed. And ultimately it's a smoother, better experience for healthcare in general. And that's just one example of how we can take messaging specifications and integrate them into smart contracts. And in this blog series, as well as this video series, I'm going to be exploring a wide variety of use cases in healthcare. And I wanna invite you to follow along uh, and to let us know your own ideas for how we can best use DAML, an open source tool chain for building multi-party workflows, how we can make this open source technology work for healthcare so that we can all do better. Thanks.